Can I ask you about your own uh, your own vocation story since I oh, have you here? Yeah, I'll be happy to. Um, yeah, the, the the easiest way to I don't really have like a single moment, but what I would mm -hmm. say is that my vocation story is as if God were it was like a jigsaw puzzle that was flipped upside down. So just seeing the cardboard side of the pieces and just seeing them fit together. It's like, oh, I like that. I like that. Like, you know, I like the rosary. I like the idea of preaching. Uh, I like the idea of living as brothers. I like the idea of evangelical poverty. And just putting all these pieces together and then seeing that sort of puzzle be flipped over and be like, oh, as Dominicans. Uh, this fit me in a funny way. I was in Delaware of all places and I was just there for like, uh, I was there for two years, but in the first month we were trying to like make friends. Uh, I was at like a theology on tap and uh, some, something like, like a young adult sort of like church mass and dinner afterwards. And at the dinner, I'm just making small talk and I'm talking with a young man who had been uh, a novice with the central province uh, and, who, and who loved Dominicans just realized it wasn't for him. And so just out of politeness, I was like, oh, tell me about Dominicans. And he was explaining to them about how, like, you know, preaching and prayer and brotherhood and, uh, and the poverty and uh, study. And I was just like, isn't that what everyone wants to do with their life? Like, what's so unique about that? And then, and then I realized, oh, that not everyone wants to do that. Like, <laughs> that's just like, it's just like what I've always wanted uh, in a yeah. certain sense. Wow. Uh, and so, yeah, just like, like things like the rosary were just like the first, like that's how I was, I learned how to pray was praying the rosary and sort of mm. having an experience of Mary teach me how to pray. Uh, and then when I read the biography of St. Dominic, I think the first one was Guy Bidwell, Grace of the Word, uh, which he says is not a life of Dominic, but it's basically biographical uh, with, with, with commentary on it. Uh, and I just read it, I was like, I just felt connected. I was like, oh yeah, I get Dominic. Or maybe like he gets me, I don't know, something's happening here. Uh, I feel like I have a friend, but he died in 1221. Um, and, uh, and, and basically the people I was living with realized like I had a crush <laughs> on Dominicans and just sort of like fell kind of head over heels for that. Uh, and, and I really, and I, I don't mean this as an exaggeration. I, just, I really just haven't ever stopped like I mean obviously there were days where I was going crazy in formation mainly for my own imperfections and selfishness mm -hmm. um, but yeah just the there's a special joy of St. Dominic um, you know in his preaching in in the sort of like I want to set Christendom on fire I want to preach to all um, and uh, and that just that just caught me and and also the witness, too, of the friars I met, at the first couple of friars I met, Father Ambrose Eckinger, Father Ignatius Schweitzer, uh, although he was brother at the time. And then also, too, the witness of uh, different Dominican sisters, the Ann Arbor sisters, the Nashville sisters, who were the first ones I came across, and just uh, just being really impressed with it and uh, just kept following it and uh, haven't looked back. So I, I think if I had to blame someone, it would be Mary and the Rosary. Uh, mm -hmm. But... Yeah, but there's a lot more strands going on. But that, I think that the rosary in particular way would be a sort of, I mean, as a thread uh, going through the whole thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we need more preaching of the rosary. I, Saint Father John Maria talked about that when he was mm. on here. He was, said he was really hoping that there would be a revival of preaching of the rosary in particular mm. by the Dominicans because, you know, that's that's who's got to how got to do it. You know. Well, especially yeah, as a revival of, of faith. Um, one of the things uh, I, I've studied a little bit of John Paul II's Mariology, and and he really holds her up as like the the mother of faith. Both that she is a model of faith, but right, when did the disciples first believe? It's at Cana, and mm -hmm. Mary is has that initiating role, and then Jesus says hold on, mom, I'm going to initiate. This is my miracle. Let me take over, right? Uh, that's how John Paul II interprets that exchange between mm -hmm. uh, Jesus and her mother, Jesus and his mother. Um, and so like Mary, like she has a line, uh, John Paul II has this line that Mary's faith kindles the faith of the apostles, mm -hmm. of the disciples. Uh, and we need faith. That's, we always need faith. Uh, but especially like Vatican II, as John Paul put it, was this call for renewal in the faith. 
Uh, and that call for renewal still needs to be fulfilled. Uh, I think uh, we're seeing that more and more. Uh, and, and so the rosary in particular way is uh, a real powerful, a really powerful um, approach to faith, to, to look upon the central mysteries of Jesus Christ with the help of Mary as his mother and our mother, that we would believe in him, believe in the incarnation, believe in the resurrection. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I would say to any preacher, don't don't be afraid to be a, a broken record uh, about the rosary. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 